马上开始进行第二阶段团体英语即席演讲比赛，欢迎第一队上台。计时开始。Ladies, gentlemen, honorable judges, and my fellow young diplomats, good afternoon. When stepping into the 21st century, things have changed so rapidly for us to keep up with. However, Taiwan has shined brightly in recent technology-related rankings and indexes development for Taiwan to stay competitive internationally. Moreover, Taiwan has have established the vision for the future and set strategy for getting there. Most importantly, Taiwan's healthcare system are recognized worldwide. As for how, Olivia will tell you further. As part of providing affordable health care to all citizens, Taiwan has taken seriously the government's role in public health in general. From before they are born until they pass away, Taiwan takes care of its citizens through effective health interventions. Taiwan promotes family planning to newlyweds. And if those couples decide to have children, our prenatal screenings and delivery care has made Taiwan's maternal mortality rate the sixth lowest in the world. To me, Taiwan is available to provide these vaccinations to all the citizens of the world, which is in need. Now we will have Winnie to give us some examples. Taiwan truly has a lot to offer to the world in regards to medicine and medical technology. But talk of technology and policy fail to fully express what Taiwan can and has done. So let me tell you how Taiwan's medical practitioners have made the world a healthier place. In the African nation of Sao Tome and Principe, malaria was so prevalent that nearly one in three people were affected with the disease. The situation was so devastating that most parents didn't name their children until they were five years old. Dr. Yuan Yuqing changed all of this. Through a program of pest management, he drastically reduced the amount of mosquitoes that carry the malaria virus and reduced the malaria rate of, malaria rate of infection from one in three to one in 100. Within three weeks of starting the program, no patients were hospitalized with malaria. In our opinion, the best international competitive advantage that Taiwan can take is medical resources. Since Taiwan has already made such amount of successful examples, this is what Taiwan can do to promote itself to the global citizens. And then we'll have Brenda for more. When considering all this factor, I see the role of health resource is a, being a powerful tool to promote international competitive. There are many great ways to improve Taiwan's diplomacy. As Olivia said, it shows our successful experiences and it's a good it's an action that we should take immediately. And also, Winnie had mentioned about how Dr. Lian Ruqing helped the citizens in Sao Tome and Principe. Taiwan, is, Taiwan has a lot to offer the international com, community due to its many standout qualities. And the time will give Clarissa. The smarter we share our healthcare resources, the better system we create, the more competitive we are. To achieve, to make the world, to make the world know our successful examples, we need you to cooperate. We need you on board. Thank you.
队，请上台。计时开始。Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Last summer, I spent a great amount of time watching the FIFA World Cup. My friends and I would stay up until two in the morning just to finish watching a game. Although I was excited by the games, I was a little bit disappointed of not seeing Taiwan as one of the participants. However, one of my friends told me that Taiwan. Is still a huge contributor to the game. The jerseys of the several teams were all made using Taiwan's innovation fabric. Innovation and creativity is definitely Taiwan's greatest international competitiveness, which will allow us to shine on the world stage. Next, after a brief explanation, my teammates are going to elaborate more on this topic. Ruby, please proceed if you will. As you wish, Derek. The World Economic Forum has indicated that international competitiveness encompasses many aspects, including a country's economic strength, cultural industry, infrastructure, medical standard, and educational level. Taiwan has attained marvelous achievements in most areas. However, there's one area Taiwan has been strongly committed to: cultural industry. Taiwan is a country with unique cultures. Technological advancement and a group of passionate young people willing to share our achievements with the world. For example, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has established a channel on YouTube, providing young people with a chance to advertise Taiwan in creative industry. Wang Pengjie is another example of someone bringing Taiwan to the global stage and facilitating our international competitiveness. Next, I would like to welcome my teammates, Andy. And、Olivia, to elaborate some more on why cultural industry is our greatest competitiveness, and how can you help to promote our diplomacy? Andy, will you? Sure, Ruby. Our innovation in the advertising and the creative communications industry is worth mentioning when it comes to promoting Taiwan's diplomacy. For instance, the trending Taiwan YouTube channel, which was founded by MOVA. On this channel, an annual competition is held. To encourage youth to upload videos introducing the myths of Taiwan, the creativity and humor of the videos have successfully drawn world's attention. Another platform young people have used is the Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity. In 2017, Taiwan participated in this festival. One of the Taiwanese films, House of Little Moments, won the Gold Lions Awards and helped our country to gain international attention. The production team. Innovate Film Showwell was composed of Taiwanese youth. Their core value was to promote Taiwan's internationalization and competitiveness. Through these advertising and creative platforms, we, the Taiwanese people, are ready to take the lead, showing the world a brand new vision of our creative way to promoting diplomacy. Olivia, what do you think? Thank you, Andy. The creativity of Taiwanese youth has proved an important part in promoting our international competitiveness. Last October, Taiwan won a championship at the sixth biennial, the World of the Bread competition held in France, for the second time in a row, outperforming 18 other teams from around the world. Wang Pengjie and his team participated in the artistic category. They utilized several local ingredients such as pineapples and a spice known as mountain pepper. All of which complemented each other in flavor. The design of the bread was also rooted in Taiwanese culture, featuring the lion with the traditional lion dances, and the red scroll representing good fortune in its mouth. Wang Pengjie created a great example of Taiwanese youth bringing their skills and talents to the whole world. The efforts Wang Pengjie have made not only promote our international competitiveness, but also promote our diplomacy. To the world stage, Derek. What's our conclusion? Thank you, teammates. Your examples are fantastic. Taiwan doesn't need immense military power to catch the world's eye. Instead, combining our culture and creativity, we can definitely shine on the world stage. From the Ken Lion Festival, which we promote Taiwan's movie industry, to Wang Pengjie, who brings Taiwan's bakery to the global stage. Through these examples. 
we can definitely enhance Taiwan's international competitiveness and promote Taiwan's diplomacy. Until then, a bright future will be inevitable for all of us in Taiwan. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We see, we care, we impact. Taiwan is a small spot on the global map. However, our influence reaches far beyond our borders. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. In this globalized era, every nation is more interconnected with one another than ever before. Thus, it is crucial for every nation to raise its competitiveness in order to stand out in the international community. And Taiwan is no exception. We believe that Taiwan's most outstanding competitiveness is technology. Not only do we have great techniques, but we are also highly innovative, international, and eco-friendly. With our strengths in technology, we can carry out research projects, make global exchanges, and promote Taiwan's, Taiwan's diplomacy. Now, let's welcome my teammates to elaborate more. Natalie, please. Thank you, Sandy. Artificial intelligence is one of Taiwan's competitiveness. Two years ago, AlphaGo beat the world's number one ranked player in Chinese Wei Qi. The advancement of artificial technology excites the world. Meanwhile, it is also challenging for Taiwan to stay competitive in such, in such a fast evolving context. Luckily, our visionary government launched a series of programs to enhance our skills in artificial intelligence. For example, the Ministry of Science and Technology established the Innovative Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. The center regularly held professional conferences on topics such as AI computing and deep learning for visual analysis. In addition, it has also provided funds for more than 50 innovative research projects. They apply artificial intelligence in a wide range of areas, from biomedical to smart manufacturing. With our advanced skills in artificial intelligence, we can keep pace with the world's trend and at the same time, promotes our country's diplomacy. And there's more. Michael, please. Thank you, Natalie. Technology education is one of Taiwan's competitiveness. Technology has always been the outstanding quality of Taiwan. However, in some developing countries, there is a huge gap between the rich and the poor students in terms of technology education. Insufficient access to technology hinders children from connecting themselves to the digital world. In this globalized era, Taiwan can employ our technical mindset and passion for education to help improve this devastating situation. But how? Take the notable Taiwanese computer company, Asus for example. Last year, the volunteers from Asus visited Southeast Asia, South Asia, and Africa to help the local schools assemble computer. Through interactive courses, the group guided the locals to use computers step by step. As you can see, by helping other countries cultivate technology education, Taiwan can not only promote our diplomacy, but also make Taiwan shine on the global stage. Next, Wayne will elaborate more. Wayne, please. Thank you, Michael. Eco-friendly technology is one of Taiwan's competitiveness. In fact, we have one of the greenest economies in the world. For example, a Taiwanese company, Super Textile, collects plastic bottles and transforms them into high-quality eco-fabrics. The production of the eco-fabrics results in 40% less carbon emission than the traditional methods. What's more, the final products are stunning. In the 2010 FIVA World Cup, players from nine different countries specifically chose to wear the Echo Fabric jerseys produced in Taiwan because they are lighter and better. Through promoting our eco-friendly products, the world will surely recognize Taiwan 
and its endeavors to change for the better. Next, Cindy will conclude on a topic. Cindy, please. Thank you, Wayne. Taiwan's strength in technology allows us to stand out in the international community, and it can definitely help us promote our diplomacy. We can't judge Taiwan by its size, just as we can't judge a book by its cover. In this globalized era, Taiwan has to stand out and let every country in the world recognize us as a competitive ally. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to bring Taiwan to the global stage together. Thank you. Taiwan has a land area of just about 36,000 square kilometers, with a population of 23 million people. In spite of its small size, Taiwan has ample diversity consisting of 16 Aboriginal tribes and large groups of immigrants from mainland China. In our opinion, we believe that the characteristics and uniqueness of Taiwan will be best showcased by three aspects. Food, performing arts, and eco technology. One of Taiwan's biggest strengths lies in the ability of a wide variety of delicious foods and drinks, offerings that are hardly consumed by locals and foreigners alike, include the papaya milkshake, pearl milk tea, oyster vermicelli, oyster omelette, stinky tofu, pork dumpling, and pork bun. As for the pearl milk tea, the so-called pearl it's actually a chewy tapioca bowl. Now, pearl milk tea can not only be found anywhere in Taiwan, but it's also widely accepted in the Western world, such as the United States, England, Germany, and Austria. Pearl dumplings and pearl buns are two other dishes that readily receive recognition. Ding Taifeng, the most prestigious restaurant selling pearl buns in Taiwan, operates dozens of branches around the world. The Hong Kong branch for bun has even been awarded one Michelin star. I believe it that these tempting dishes can completely conquer anyone's demanding palates. Another area of strength in Taiwan lies in its ability to entertain audiences. Taiwan boasts three internationally celebrated performance troops, Ming Hua Yuan, Pili Papi Theater and the Cloud Gate Dance Theater of Taiwan. Ming Hua Yuan, founded in 1929, is a Taiwanese opera troupe. Its body gestures, face painting, background music, and singing are all elements that make opera intriguing to audiences around the world. The Pili Papi Theater is not just your traditional puppy troupe. Using modern visual and audio special effects, the puppets are shown not only on TV, but also on the big screen. Each puppy is also a delicate sculpture of great artistic value. The Cloud Gate Dance Theater of Taiwan, founded by the world-renowned choreographer Lin Huai Ming in 1973, is the first contemporary dance company in the Chinese-speaking community. From ancient Chinese dramas, marvelous puppy theater performances to modern dance, Taiwanese creativity and dedication to their art are effective means to showcase Taiwan's culture of the power. A third way can Taiwan show our competitive advantage is through the eco technology, which is widely known in FIFA World Cup. If you paid attention to the jerseys those athletes wear, you will find out that 16 country footballers were wearing uniforms made in Taiwan or made with fab manu fab fabric manufactured on this island. The jerseys are mainly sponsored by Adidas and Nike, both of which use fabric from recycled plastic bottle fibers that are manufactured by Taiwan textiles companies. Jerseys made from recycled plastic bottle fibers can provide great comfort and breathability, 
and that undoubtedly have gained positive feedback in sportswear market. Although Taiwan is absent from FIFA World Cup in 2018, this soft power was seen in a global event, and most of all, we are sure more people will know Taiwan via this eco-technology. As a Taiwanese, I am proud of my heritage and believe it has a lot to offer the world. Taiwanese cuisines are sure to make your mouth water. Taiwanese performing arts are full of wonder. And eco-technology in Taiwan is a miracle. Taiwan has world-famous Taiwanese food, which is a juxtaposition of Western and Eastern cuisines. Taiwan has troops whose body gestures, facial paintings, background music, and singing are intriguing. Taiwan has innovative power which shines in FIFA. To adapt to a rapidly changing world, we have to explore and integrate what we possess to keep a foothold in this competitive world. Thank you. Taiwan is a country surrounded by sea. People here are open-minded and creative. We are known for developing electronic components. Also, hot and humid weathers create diverse food culture like Taiwan's night market. Besides, Taiwanese people are liberal and tolerant toward diverse religion. Some religious rituals are so special that they are considered to be the world living heritage and are even brought to the international stage. Above mentioned are Taiwan's outstanding and unique qualities. In order to promote our diplomacy, we'll explain our advantage in three aspects. First, we'll have Arthur to elaborate on the first quality, technology. Thank you, Iris. When it comes to technology in Taiwan, Largan position, the biggest optics camera lens manufacturer in the world cannot be forgotten. Can you imagine that? While people are using cell phones around you, all the cell phone camera lens are from Taiwan. This distinguished company is Largan, one of Taiwan's prides. Besides Largan, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company Limited had also created a firm in the field of inter integrated circuit. Thanks to these steady enterprises, Taiwan can stand on the shoulder of a giant and be seen by the whole world. Next, Emily is going to elaborate on the second aspect. Thank you, Arthur. When we mentioned about Taiwan's food culture, you can't miss the exhausted cuisines when we are talking about Taiwan's stand-out quality by promoting our country's diplomacy. First, you will never know the taste of stinky tofu unless you come to Taiwan. It is made of a piece of fermented tofu, which the cook hollows out the middle of tofu and then puts some cucumber and carrot dress inside. Sometimes, there might be some kimchi as a side dish for you to make your tofu palatable. After filling your stomach, you may feel thirsty. Handmade drinks are thought to be classic local drinks to foreigners. The tapioca balls with black tea and milk are chewy and tasty. It is said that this drink is invented out of boredom, but now many countries started to import these lovely drinks from Taiwan. Who will know these little bubbles can bring unlimited profits? Right, Aiden? That's right, Emily. Aside from high quality products and various mouth watering snacks, Taiwan is richly multicultural. Aboriginal, Hokkien, Hakka traditions, and Miao Hui Temple Fair play important roles in Taiwanese culture. It goes without saying that Taiwan's, Taiwanese accept different religions and take them as a nutrition. In Taiwan society, there are mainly Buddhism, Taoism, together with other beliefs like Catholicism, Christianity, and so on. The, the, the most famous event of Taoism is the Da Jia Mazu pilgrimage, which is organized by the Da Jia Zhenlan Temple from April to May. Mazu pilgrimage is considered to be the world living heritage by UNESCO. 
This annual event lasts for nine days and nights. They set up from Dajia, go ahead to Taizong, go south, arrive at Jiayi Mazu Temple, and then return. If you want to try, you are welcome to find a route or decide which day you want to join as a backpacker. Next, Iris is going to further elaborate the most important part of the pilgrimage. Thank you, Aiden. What people expect most is to welcome Ma Zhu's sacred creature by waiting in a long line and crawling underneath it. This is called crawling chair feet. It's believed that crawling chair feet can drive bad luck away and bring good luck. By this advantage, we can see Taiwanese patient, kindness, their piety toward religion. In conclusion, I think I should promote Taiwan's characteristic in different ways. Either in the aspect of technology or featured cuisine, we can show our vitality. Not to mention our soft power, our Matsu culture and culture charm. By this advantage, we're, we're, we're able to promote our diplomacy and make friends with people in different countries. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Taiwan, as a small sea island with unlimited potentials, has been suppressed by mainland China in our diplomatic situation. However, being a creative and democratic nation, we are still influential and definitely able to reverse our harsh circumstances like a deeply rooted flourishing tree in this ever-changing world. With cutting-edge technique, including agriculture, medical services, and technology, we are able to keep prospering in the near future. Thanks, David. You may be confused why agriculture represents the root. Well, compared our farming ability to our neighboring country, some of them have vast mainland, sufficient workforce, adequate water resources, and most importantly, is their extensive domestic demand market. On the contrary, we Taiwanese can develop high quality agriculture. By economic interaction with their countries, the mutual, the mutual links between their home country and Taiwan can be better fostered by exchanging our farming technique and goods circulation. Taiwanese government is able to offer experienced farming experts and advanced equipment to those countries in need. People in India also call Taiwan Papaya Kingdom because of our booming agriculture. We can establish mutually beneficial relationships with those countries by exporting our high quality agricultural product. Though Taiwan is a tiny spot on earth, but our influence is, is so much more. Thanks, Wendy. Medical services is like the trunk of the tree. A season chant, the trunk grows tougher. Taiwan has drawn on its own experiences of disasters, health emergencies, in disease prevention to offer assistance to countries such as Malawi and Swatini to combat dengue fever and HIV virus, to upgrade food safety, and to boost primary health care. Also, Taiwan's government has also sent aid to those areas affected by natural disasters, both to countries with diplomatic ties such as Paraguay after the flooding in December 2015 and to countries without official relations, such as Fiji following Cyclone Winston in February 2016. Moreover, our medical teams have served on both long-term and short-term medical missions in over 24 countries. They have not only donated medical devices to the underdeveloped countries, but also built health facilities and trained the local health workers. 
Thank you, Paul. As the tree of Taiwan grows, it also gets leafier and bare fruits in the field of technology. First, microchip made in Taiwan are of good quality, which attract clients from all over the world. Founded in Taiwan in 1987 by Maurice Zhang, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is the world's first dedicated semiconductor foundry and has long been the leading company in its field. In March 2017, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company market capitalization surpassed that of semiconductor giant Intel for the first time, hitting 5.14 trillion new Taiwan dollars. Also, Asus and Acer are respected competitors in the sales of laptops. Their innovative designs, reasonable prices, and high capacity make them stand out from the other overseas enterprises. The companies I mentioned above show the glory and competitiveness of Taiwan to the whole world. Thanks, Alyssa. As aforementioned, with the cutting edge technique, including the strong root of agriculture, firm trunk of medical services, and lush leaves and fruits of technology, Taiwan is able to strongly promote our diplomacy and earn an international spot in this dynamic and highly competitive global village. Thank you. Hello, dear judges and fellow contestants. We are Group 7. Since the break from official relations with mainland China starting in June 2016, the importance of Taiwan's international competitiveness has been rising. Due to the loss of tourism profits from Taiwan, Hong Kong and China, and also the decreased confidence for both domestic and foreign businesses to invest in the island. Although thanks to the positive growth of the exports market, Taiwan has still been able to maintain its economic status around the globe. In the long run, it is certain that Taiwan has to implement new strategies and make use of our strengths and competitiveness. In that way, it would be more feasible for us to promote our diplomacy. With that said, let's welcome Giselle to tell us some examples of Taiwan's international competitiveness. Thank you, Ashley. Sometime around the 80s, Taiwan experienced a sharp rise of fame around the world when the electronic industry started flourishing and stood out for many countries. And to this day, Electronics still makes up a big part of Taiwan's export today. It is because of Taiwanese workers' fast ability to pick up new techniques and creativity that we have gained recognition from components production and semiconductors. Aside from electronic, one strain Taiwan's possess that other nations don't is our strong external position. It is without a doubt with careful use of our, of our VAX FX reserves and external debt burden. Taiwan could do well on our way to promote better diplomatic abilities. Next, let's welcome Nicole to tell us more. Thank you, Tia. In the latest evolution report, Taiwan is elected as one of the super innovators alongside the US, Germany and Switzerland. Such an achievement is especially incredible because most countries fail to score high in the field. As a resource, we should take advantage of the trades and works to promote diplomacy and opera mobility in the international society. As we all know, the more power a country holds, the more value a country has, the more willing other countries would like to work with them. Thus, 
although our diplomatic relations are restricted. By becoming stronger, it is more likely that we will have closer bounds with other nations as well. Last, Heidi will wrap it up for us. Thank you, Nicole. Taiwan was once an economic miracle that received praises from all over the world. Therefore, I believe that with enough effort and time being put into the work, it is definitely possible for us to stand proud in the economic society again. Nowadays, the traditional method of engagement in global affairs is a lot different due to the political climate. Nevertheless, if we could enhance our competitiveness around the world, more countries and organizations would hope to collaborate. In turn, we can deliver and receive help and support as well as improve our diplomatic situation. More diplomatic allies means more resources and more assistance. If we can make good use of our international competitive advantages, Taiwan is sure to prosper again. That's the end of our speech. Well, thank, thank you. you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and honorable judges. Today, we would like to share how Taiwan can promote diplomacy through soft power. Soft power is the engine of Taiwan. It facilitates the protection and development of numerous industries and indirectly influences our lives. By developing and expanding our dominant industries and soft power, we can strengthen Taiwan's economy and raise Taiwan's visibility in the international community. We would like to discuss fields that will best promote Taiwan's diplomacy. These are in the agricultural, technological, and medical sectors. Now, Many will tell you more about agriculture. Thank you, Shanti. Agriculture has a long history, but with new technological advances, we have increased the efficiency of our crop industries while lowering cost and improving quality. In Taiwan, we have used crop improvement methods, genetic modification, and disease prevention techniques to ensure plentiful harvest every year. Nowadays, we are developing the Taiwan Productivity 4.0 initiative by using a new generation of wisdom to build a new agricultural economy. Because of global warming and the depletion of ocean resources, it is more important than ever to develop agriculture that is resistant to these new changes in our environment. Developing farms and starting agricultural businesses in many areas can not only increase employment opportunities and assist local population to learn a professional skill, but also develop agricultural resources for foreign trade that can benefit everyone globally. Next, Emily will tell us about technology. Thank you, Mini. As for technology, this might be something that Taiwan is quite good at. In order to solve the lack of electricity in remote areas, Taiwan can make microgrids and smart grids, like we did in Penghu. In addition, smart stores are a new product that can greatly facilitate our life by using advanced AI robots. Some smart stores even allow their customers to pay by cell phone or face recognition. 
AI is quickly being developed and might be able to solve the problem with aging populations by taking care of elders in the future. Smart networks are being developed now. Once they're finished, all living spaces are going to be transformed. This new technology can integrate our computer network with appliances and furniture around the house, like refrigerators, mirrors, or televisions. If we can use our advantages properly, Taiwan is sure to be in the forefront of the world. Next, Cindy will tell you about medical technology. Thanks, Emily. Taiwan's medical talent has earned recognition in the global community. We have devoted a great deal of resources to medical innovation. That is, to supply all the people in the world cutting-edge healthcare. IOMT, also known as Internet of Medical Things, is the technology that connects patients, medical staff, medicine, and various medical facilities to support automatic identification, tracking, and management. It plays an important role in the healthcare industry to increase the accuracy, reliability, and productivity of electronic devices. Wearable devices, such as healthcare smartwatches and wearable glucose monitors, are applications of IOMT. These devices provide smart medical care to people and create a more complete healthcare system. Since IOMT has been exported to other countries, Taiwan has been able to utilize this innovative technology and promote diplomacy in the global community. Here's Shanti to conclude our speech. Thank you, Cindy. Taiwan has strong private enterprises and various kinds of soft power. By focusing on them, Taiwan is sure to gain competitiveness in the world market and stay sustainable on the world stage. Based on the above points, we believe Taiwan has come a long way to develop a environment to elevate Taiwan's status in the globalized world. Thank you. As the dawn of globalization draws near, it is crucial that we enhance our international competitiveness. Good afternoon, honorable judges. Last summer, I was required to participate in an international volunteering program in Bali, Indonesia. Right, I was required to. I was yelling in my heart, no, no, I'm not that kind of person that knows how to paintbrush the walls or help the injured. But what I was doing in Bali was far from my stereotypical impression to a volunteering job. I, along with three teammates from Japan, France, and Germany, were assigned to provide our experiences to help the locals maintain their traditional lifestyle and increase their income. Standing in the middle of the green rice field, my friends and I first shared our experiences with one another. It wasn't until then that I realized how much misunderstanding and misconceptions they had toward my homeland, Taiwan. We laughed and cleared them up. Sometimes the communication broke down. After all, English is not our mother tongue. But after a moment, we can always find a way to express ourselves. After a week, we presented the outcome. At that moment, I had a brand new idea toward volunteering. It's not just about helping others, but also about helping ourselves. What do you think, Claire? Good job, Julian. Your experience precisely explains how English language plays an essential role in promoting our international competitiveness. In a world of globalization, we should redefine what English is. Now English is more and more accepted as a culture-independent communication tool and is no longer a privilege to native speakers. English ability is not limited to correct grammar, but the capability to express oneself precisely and to negotiate with others successfully. Think of Julian's example. When a discussion is processing among a Taiwanese, a Japanese, a French, and a German, 
What is the lingua franca? English. When it comes to international competitiveness, the very first issue to make the world understand us, English is the key to open the door. What do you think, Annie? You were right, Claire. And changes are happening, if you have noticed. Have you noticed more and more vehicles are replaced by electric ones? Changes are happening here. And more importantly, these changes leave no one behind. Taiwan is quite mature in the implementation in the key areas such as smart water management, circular economy, ecological conservation, and ecological conservation. For example, in health, our data provide evidence for disease prevention and risk management, and may be even used to improve the efficiency of the hospitals. It is really amazing, isn't it, Melody? I completely agree with you, Annie. English competence and cultural differences are crucial in enhancing our international competitiveness. But we are still lack of the last piece of the puzzle. Cooperation instead of competition. We know we are good, but lots of others are not. This is no longer work to fight alone. Each issue becomes so complicated and unique that any single past experience fails to account for it. In Julia's example, the locals in Bali hope to increase their income, yet remain the traditional lifestyle and value system. Julian worked with teammates from different countries and proposed a feasible solution. And in this solution, we are able to find an opportunity to gain benefit as well as to expand our horizons. It's a win-win, isn't it? Back to you, Julian. Thank you, Melody. I feel so lucky to have the opportunity to visit Bali. You know, I was quite reluctant to go at first, but my trip evidences the key issues to improve our competitiveness. Through enhancing our international com competitiveness and our English communication ability, the understanding and cooperation of cross-cultural differences, the capability to cooperate with others, we realize the future of Taiwan! Thank you, everyone. Good morning. In this rapidly changing world, globalization has become an unavoidable trend. It is crucial for Taiwan to have high international competitiveness to stand out in this global society and promote diplomacy at the same time. As a Taiwanese, I am proud to say that Taiwan remains 13 in the World Economic Forum's Global, Competitive, uh, global Competitiveness Report of 2018, as well as fourth in East Asia and the Pacific. Among these statistics, Taiwan uh, made into the top 10, ranking seventh and fourth in financial system and innovation capability. However, in my perspective, I believe that the word competitiveness is not only associated with the economic situation or investments of one's nation, but are also striving to improve in different aspects such as youth's abilities and potentials which are the most, uh, which are the most competitive, uh, competitive advantages that has the most power in. Um, to me, I believe that as teenagers ourselves, we need to carry on the mission of diplomacy and also uh, enhance ourselves uh, um, uh, abilities into global insights and carry on, continue carry on the, uh, the mission of diplomacy. Education has played an essential role in the advancement of international influence. 
Taiwanese university has also played a central role, uh, play an essential role in the knowledge-based economic development, not only through meeting the market's external requirements, but also through competing other institutions on the global stage. Uh, nowadays, there are many opportunities and activities for youth like us to participate in uh, different activity, uh, different events, and uh, increase our international influence. For example, I have participated in a month at Shanghai this January, and my friend Linda has done a year of foreign exchange in the UK. These experiences have broadened our horizon and cultivated ourselves to be more open-minded. The youth in Taiwan is the greatest competitive advantages that has the most potential. Through creating a more open, friendlier, and appealing platform, Taiwan's youth can interact with other countries and thereby increase our com international competitiveness, show others what we possess, and promote our diplomacy. I woke up in the morning and heard a buzz from my phone. It was an international news reminder. With a simple click, I shared it with my friends. A significant benefit of involving Taiwanese teenagers in promoting diplomacy is our, is our familiarity with internet technology. As the influence of the internet gradually rises, it, knowing how to make use of internet has become a significant advantage. For example, the famous youth representative Shen Xingling, at the age of 11, established, established an online sales platform to sell Taiwanese agricultural products. In addition, we can also participate in international competitions to let the world know our international comp comp competitiveness. Our school has been participating in the International Young Physicist Tournament last year. Michelle participated in it last year. Uh, by discussing with other teammates and interacting with uh, the, open, uh, the op opponent team from other countries, she has learned greatly and has known the role that she, that she has to play as a Taiwanese on the global stage. Like my colleague Linda had mentioned, I participated in the physics debate last year and broadens my horizon. Indeed, we sound it out, we teenagers can take part in it and play a potential role in improving Taiwan's international competitiveness. What we teenagers do, what we teenagers accomplish, and what we teenagers are exposed to have every effect on, of our own future and also the prospect of Taiwan society. We teenagers can be engaged in a part of Taiwan's international competitiveness because the youth is the greatest advantage of Taiwan. In my perspective, I believe that we should be the doers with our heads in the cloud and feet on the ground. Let the spirit ignite a fire within us and leave the world better than we found it. Thank, Thank you. you. What makes Superman a hero is not because he has the power, but the wisdom and maturity to use his power wisely. Living in this flourishing modern society, having international competitiveness is a crucial thing to thrive in this 21st century. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, today my teammates will share their opinions of what area does Taiwan hold international competitiveness to promote our diplomacy. Now let's welcome Lucas to tell us more. In my opinion, Taiwan's greatest international competitiveness is definitely our technology. A friend of mine, Trista Zhang, who is really creative and enjoys robot building and robot programming. Though she often comes across with a lot of difficulties and failures, she never gives up. Last year, at the age of 16, 
She and her teammates participated in the international robot competition called First Lego League International Robot Competition. They won the first place in this competition. And she told me the key to win this competition is not only to have great ability, but also to persevere. This not only is a great um, accomplishment her team had achieved, but also an excellent way to show the world Taiwan's innovative, cutting edge innovation. By enhancing our technological fields, Taiwan could definitely promote its diplomacy. Now let's come Jean to tell us more. In my point of view, we can enhance our international competitiveness by revitalizing global partnerships with quality education. Last summer vacation, there was a group of Maori students from New Zealand who took a trip to Taiwan to see their ancestral land. They came to my home, a small Aboriginal village in Hualien. It was an amazing cultural exchange to further modernize the awareness of indig indigenous connection among the young bilateral generations. The Maori kids were happy and felt very comfortable being taught by older youth rather by their regular teachers. Being around Maori kids was quite positive, interesting, and helped me further recognize a greater sense of responsibility toward the global community. Providing college education can help Taiwanese youth more responsible. The key to promote our country's diplomacy is to showcase our softer power. Our future growth relies on competitiveness, innovation, relationship, and productivity. And these, in turn, rely on the education of our people. Now, Howie, I hand it to you. From my perspective, academic area is the greatest advantage that could be used to promote our diplomacy. An exceptional example would be a global initiative symposium known as the GIS Taiwan. During this activity, professionals from different fields participated in discussions of current issues with students. By assembling scholars, entrepreneurs, and students, GIS Taiwan hopes not only to integrate academic knowledge into applic application, but also build an interdisciplinary platform for global leaders to interact with the next generations. Through these types of interactions and academic courses, Taiwan will be empowered to connect the world and promote our diplomacy. In this light, we can share hope, and together, we can build many roads to a brighter future. Justin, take it from here. Thank you for those enlightening examples. As an old saying goes, the longest journey begins with a single step. And we believe that our first step would include in these three examples. By enhancing our technology, providing quality education, taking part in academic courses, we can successfully promote our diplomacy. With dedicated hearts, we can aim to ensure that Taiwan can contend and flourish in this global village for, for generations, generations to come. Thank you. Ila Formosa, an island of 36,000 square kilometers, looks a little bit tiny on the world map, but its presence is beyond its size, and its impact can reach out far beyond its borders. Why? Because the competitiveness embedded in its unique soft power makes it shine like a diamond in the international arena. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. When it comes to Taiwan's competitiveness, dozens of possibilities flash through our minds. Here, we would like to focus on our development of green energy, our contribution in agriculture, and our innovative inventions 
employed in solving the global issues. Now, let me invite my teammate Alice to elaborate. Thank you, Wayne. Speaking of our international competitiveness, our achievements in green technology is really worth mentioning. In order to relieve the problem of global warming, Taiwan has set a goal of generating 20% of our power through renewable resources by 2025. There is no better example of our commitment to going green than Shaolin Green Energy Park. This project features green applications such as wirelessly charged buses, self-sustaining buildings, and even vehicle-mounted solar panels. Research activities at the park focus on the development of solar, biomass, and offshore wind power technology. As a matter of fact, the executive yuan is now in cooperation with Malaysia, which has been plagued with power shortages. Shaolin Green Energy Park not only ensures the safety and sustainability of our future green industry, but also reaffirms our everlasting dedication to reducing carbon emissions and yielding more energy. Green energy! So what do you think, Oscar? Thank you, Alice. Our achievements in green technology are remarkable. On top of that, our agricultural technology is also incredibly competitive. In addition to our long-standing efforts in livestock breeding and sending agricultural delegations to other countries, our agricultural medicine has also emerged as a major player on the global stage. This August, a vaccine for swine atrophic rhinitis was introduced to Thailand. The disease affects the upper respiratory system of the pigs, reducing weight gain and potentially causing death. However, Thanks to the vaccine developed by the students and professors from Zhongxin University, this disease can be prevented. The vaccine has already been introduced to Korea and Thailand, with Vietnam and Japan soon to follow. I believe our agricultural technology is one of the most valuable commodities Taiwan has to offer. What do you think, Kelly? Thank you, Oscar. I totally agree with you. I believe our originality and creativity can surely show the world our strong international competitiveness. In recent years, Taiwanese youth have won several top prizes in many international competitions. This year, in Tokyo Invention Exhibition, students from Zhonghua University won the gold medal by inventing the B-Bike, a kind of bicycle sharing system, in which Riders can generate electricity while pedaling. In this way, we can get more exercise, cut down car exhausts, and save energy. This remarkable achievement not only shows that Taiwan's new generation has been encouraged to put their intellect and creativity to great use, but also helped Taiwan win more recognition through the field of invention. Back to you, Wayne. Thank you, Kelly. I can't agree with you more. As you can see, Taiwan's competitiveness can help us promote diplomacy in various ways. With our vigor and potential, combined with our open global mindsets, we, the new generation, boast the influential self-power that boosts our international profile. By developing and researching green technology, by sharing agricultural medicine and resources, or even by solving the global issues with our creativity and originality. We, the 23 million people on the beautiful island, would keep helping Taiwan win worldwide recognition and respect in the international arena. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is getting smaller, but with our constant efforts, Taiwan is getting bigger and stronger. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On the path of centuries, 
Taiwan has been an important role in this world. According to the Global Competitiveness Report 2018 by World Economic Forum, Taiwan is ranked second in Asia, following the first, Japan, and ranked seventh for financial system. Taiwan is also described as a super innovator in the report. In this globalization era, Taiwan needs to become more internationally minded to face the world. Despite the diplomatic pressure from China, Taiwan hopes to establish a strong network of cooperation and exchange in economy. Now, let's welcome the next speaker. Simon, please. When it comes to economy, most Taiwanese businesses are medium-sized and face difficult competition in markets dominated by larger companies. To address these challenges, the government especially offers branding, branding services such as the program Branding Taiwan. Ecof, Ecof Environment Corp. Quinting is a good example of this program. They are, they are looking forward to expanding their EFW business, which means energy from West in Sydney. Energy from West business into South Pole countries. Also, they operate some small West incinerators in Vietnam, India, and Malaysia. This is also beneficial for ECOV to build their own international channels. Wendy, please. With the cultural development, with the help of cultural development, Taiwan can gain a lot of economic benefits. For example, tourism and film industry are two important elements for Taiwan's economy. In order to bring more foreigners to Taiwan, the government organized the tours for tourists to explore these famous events and sceneries. One famous tour is in Pingxi, which includes a visit to a mineral factory on Old Street, and people can set off sky lanterns, which is a must-see event. Furthermore, MOFA has made two famous soap operas, The Fierce Wife, Xi Li Ren Qi, and The Where We Were, Xi Liu Ge Xia Tian, on air in Latin American countries. This activity can promote more cultural communication and boost Taiwan's economic by selling these soap operas to Spanish-speaking allies. This would open doors for Taiwan's this will open doors for tourists in other countries and elevate the Taiwanese film industry in the world. Helen, please. To sum up, we think economy can promote Taiwan's development. The government is leaving no stone unturned in cooperating with other governments and supporting overseas industry and organizations to boost economic growth. So tourism, film industry, and economic cooperation. Taiwan can not only broadcast Taiwan's strengths and vibrant culture, but also gain more benefits from further cooperation and closer relationship. Even though Taiwan is a small country, we connect to other parts of the world to prove our competitiveness in different aspects and obtain an international status. Thank, Thank you. you.
，计时开始。Since helping the world to solve the problem of malaria, Taiwan has started to gain international recognition in our medical field. We hold great international competitiveness on the medical aspects, which can definitely lead to pr- the promotion of on our diplomacy. To be more spe- specific, Taiwan t- medical strengths are known worldwide. For example, we hold an advanced technique on special surgeries such as organ transplantations or minimally invasive surgeries, which are carried out with way tinier wounds. First, organ transplantations. Kaohsiung Changgen Hospital and National Taiwan University Hospital. Holds an advanced technique on organ transplantations. Patients who had undergone the organ transplantations live the longest in the world. Besides organ transplantations, minimally invasive surgeries. Zhanghua Shouchuan Hospital has the most famous minimally invasive surgery center in Asia. The center not only saves emergency patients. But also cultivate international talents. With a great deal of experience on both minimally invasive surgeries and organ transplantations, Taiwan has gained a lot of international recognition. For example, the ABC News of the United States once described Taiwan as health utopia, the heaven of health. Therefore, patients from all over the world. Fly to Taiwan to receive high-quality operations. As a developed country, Taiwan pursues a complete society. On medical technology, it has strengths to achieve that. Taiwan has the capability of performing complex operations, developing technology, and most importantly, training personnel. We have great experiences on a complete system of advanced academic education, which provides our youth with adequate trainings in the medical field. Through the cultivation, our youth can learn the strengths of our country and keep on the development by integrating all resources and applying new technology into our soft power. Following the belief a medical should be without borders, we also send batches of medical teams abroad, which are often attended by youth volunteers. This way, we can share the technology and experiences to the countries in need, and at the same time, promote our country's diplomacy. As we mentioned earlier, medical aid should be without borders. Medical rescue is one of the most important work to do in the world nowadays. Taipei Medical University has sent students to go to Eswatini to give humanitarian medical aid. We are going to improve their hardware and software. First, the software. We have built cancer curing centers to let people without suffers. Also. Separate rooms are set so that diseases wouldn't be spread. Secondly, the software part. Cultivate. We are going to cultivate talents there, and also our doctors will will give them humanitarian aid with passion and energy. And to improve the general health in Eswatini, we can not only interact with st- local people in Eswatini, but also. Enhance the relationships between us and Eswatini. In our opinion, by being able to perfect high-end surgeries, cultivate youth, and develop technology, and offer international aids, we surely possess great competitiveness on our medical field. By utilizing these medical strengths, our diplomacy can be re- improved. As a result, Taiwan. Is fighting alongside the rest of the world in engraving a better future for upcoming generations. Thank you.
十五队请上台。Honorable judges, dear teachers and fellow students, good afternoon. I'm Kelly. Today, we would like to talk about what we can do to promote Taiwan's diplomacy. As far as I know, Taiwan is pushing hard to stake out a more distinct international image. Under the circumstances, we can use our advantage to raise the island's profile and promote Taiwan's diplomacy. Uh, as for the past few years. Taiwan has put considerable effort into using soft power and has gradually gained a good reputation in many countries, in some aspects ranging from new media to medical technology. For example, we can use new media to introduce Taiwan's diverse aspect and from the government's or from Taiwan's YouTube channel. As for medical technology, we can recruit foreigners to come to our medical school and uploading videos of successful cases on the internet. What's more, I want to point out that not only big companies and governments, but also we youth of Taiwan have the ability to show ta Taiwan's diplomacy to the world. For the, over the years, Taiwanese youth have performed excellently in lots of international activities. Next, my teammate Fabiola will talk about new media in detail. Ladies and gentlemen, we think that Taiwan can promote our international competitiveness by new media. Take microfilms as an example. Ma ying office once uploaded a microfilm, National Flag Girl to YouTube, successfully exposing the ROC national flag to people around the world. It is a romance between a Taiwanese boy who loves traveling with the ROC national flag and a hybrid girl who returns to her motherland, Taiwan, for the first time. Wrapped in a love story, the microfilm attracts several hundred thousand page views, not only inspiring page vodism, but also exposing the ROC national flag to people around the world. Short video clips are also effective. Our Ministry of Foreign Affairs opened the Trending Taiwan channel to introduce the diverse and intriguing as aspects of Taiwan. Since it was set up in 2015, Trending Taiwan has created over 500 videos, among which Second Chance is a successful example. It is a true story of a foreign young girl who received a liver transplant at 13 months old, thanks to Taiwan's compassion and medical magic. By these new media, we can be brought to the global stage and Taiwan can be exposed to the world successfully. Next, my teammate, Winnie, will give another example. Friends, since Taiwan has cutting edge medical technology, we can use it to promote Taiwan's diplomacy. First, we can enroll foreign students in our medical schools so that they can apply medical expertise to treating patients in their countries. Take Dr. Dilamini as an example. As a young adult from Kingdom of Eswatini, he majored in medicine in Iso Medical School. After graduation, he returned to his motherland and filled the local medical practitioners with new energy. Dr. Dilamini not only devotes what he learns in Taiwan, but also reveals our medical strengths to the international community. What's more, Uploading short videos of the successful cases on the internet is also a good way. The video, A Perfect Pair, is an example, which is about Gil Loan from Vietnam battling congenital lymphedema since childhood. Loan traveled to Taiwan for a series of complex surgeries, saving her leg from amputation and giving her a second chance in life. In, in fact, Taiwan is creating millions of true stories which reflects a selfless contribution to boost global competitiveness. I think it's a declaration to the world that helping Loan is more than helping her get over the rare disease, but actually safeguarding fundamental human rights. Next, my teammates Madeline will sum up the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Madeline. Diplomacy is not an easy thing but an art that makes the impossible possible. 
as my teammates mentioned, there are two things that we think are the most influential, including using new media and demonstrating our medical technology to the world. This can not only attract more people to come to Taiwan, but also bring about more and more tours and receipts. That's why we have a so-called super innovator. As people of Taiwan, we should be immensely proud of the progress that we have made and the ability to create a better tomorrow. Thanks for your attention. ASEAN, an association of Southeast Asian countries, has become the world's seventh largest economy. From 1993 to 2017, the total trade volume of ASEAN has dramatically increased from $400 billion to $2.5 trillion. From these phenomena, we can see that the competitiveness of Southeast Asian countries has risen. How about Taiwan? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are now living in a fast-changing world which greatly impacts everyone. Although it brings challenges, there are great opportunities for Taiwan. Over the past two decades, Taiwan has been playing one of the important roles in Asia by providing agribusiness skills, medical assistance, and cutting-edge technology to the neighboring countries. These are the strengths of Taiwan that we should promote to the international society. And through promoting these advantages, we can surely be able to ameliorate our attitude and enhance our diplomacy. Later, through my partner's elaboration, we'll have a better understanding of what competitive advantages we have and how this can help us promote our diplomacy. Thank you, Bingjie. Speaking of our international competitiveness, we have always been proud of our advanced agricultural and technological development. For example, the Taiwanese government has been eagerly promoting the Regional Agricultural Development Program, which includes promoting more farm equipment trading and exchanging farming skills with other countries. Through the communication of technique upgrading and infrastructural development in every business, the farmers in every country can not only benefit from the increase of food production, but also elevate the quality products of all countries. Besides, having one of the most advanced technology industries in Asia has always been a pride of Taiwan. According to the famous magazine Fortune, the largest technology company in Taiwan, Foxconn, is ranked number three largest tech company in the world. We have used our technology to show the world what we can offer, and we are willing to contribute more. By assisting other countries with our agricultural development and cutting edge technology, we can establish a stronger tie with them, and this will definitely better our diplomacy. That's right, Alex. Besides our agricultural development and our high tech industry, our medical technology and multiculturalism are also seen as our important competitiveness. As for the medical field, after we build a strong foundation through continuous sharpening our medical skills and striving hard to make a better progress to invent new medical equipment, we could actively join international research projects and publish more medical journals. Through these, we can acquire new knowledge and exchange ideas, and also share our value and create a chance for Taiwan to shine on the global stage. Furthermore, the multiculturalism in Taiwan is another advantage that we have. For instance, our government has been promoting the halal food, which is a special menu designed for the Muslims. Through this, we can attract more visitors and informers internationally because they can adapt to Taiwan's environment better. They can gain a better understanding of Taiwan, and we can also promote our diplomacy to them. Through our medical technology and our multiculturalism, we will surely be able to promote Taiwan's diplomacy. Exactly, Cindy. In this fast-developing world, Taiwan is facing a tougher diplomatic situation than before. Therefore, we should know what strengths we have and enhance our international competitiveness to promote Taiwan's diplomacy. As my partners just mentioned, 
There are many parts of Taiwan that can assist us. First, we have well-developed agricultural techniques. Taiwan's quality agriculture is one of our strong points and soft power. Next, we can utilize our advanced medical skills to help others in need. Through this, not only can we gain more international approval, but we can strengthen the ties between Taiwan and other countries. Last, but certainly not least, multiculturalism is also another important element when we talk about Taiwan's international competitiveness. It is what has helps us remain a unique country. Due to fast globalization, it is becoming harder and harder for us to shine on this global stage. And as we all know, promoting diplomatic work is no easy task. But we believe as long as we are willing to try, we will surely lead Taiwan to a, a promising future. future. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone in attendance here. My name is Claudia, and today my teammates and I would like to talk to you about how Taiwan can improve its international competitiveness in both the Asia-Pacific region and around the world. In today's interlinked message world, it remains necessary for countries to possess the skills and prowess needed to make them a player in what has become a very competitive marketplace. To do so successfully, Taiwan must focus in particular on certain aspects which show our strengths and magnify our talents. So, in which area of Taiwan hold the international strategy of promoting our diplomacy? Now, Janice will discuss with some of her ideas. Thank you, Claudia. Youth exchange programs can come in various forms. Very often, they involve a reciprocal swap of students between two countries. Teenagers and young adults will spend a semester or year living with a host family while attending a local high school or university. This is a win-win situation for all involved, as students are able to see their host country from the point of view of the locals, while the host and the local students are able to learn the lives their student guests lead back in their home countries. As meals are shared and trips are taken, Useful dialogue takes place, which breaks down boundaries and opens up everyone's eye to a broader look at the world. This is a wonderful experience for any teenager to see the world through the eyes of someone from a different culture. Now, Stephen will continue with additional thoughts. Thank you, Janice. A strength of Taiwan I feel very strongly about is quality education providing all the world's youth access to good schools with capable teachers is essential for the future success of all generations, regardless of where they are living. Lifelong learning opportunities must be offered to all children, thus giving them a chance to enrich their lives and give back to their communities. Besides, Taiwan has been offering help to its international allies for years through the building of schools and the provision of textbooks and technology. And we will continue to provide this assistance for as long as it is needed. Because I think education is based on a country's competitiveness importance. Now, Doris will offer some concluding thoughts. Thank you, Stephen. As we have outlined, it will be Taiwan's youth who are the ones we must rely on to push us forward toward much more competitive standards. Through the International Youth Exchange Program, we can contact the Taiwan International Youth Exchange Association to learn more about becoming an exchange student. We have no doubt that you will be very glad that you did. And also, education is also important to 
develop Taiwan's international competitiveness. And today, as we and our fellow competitors stand before you today, we must give out a shout of thanks to Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the sponsorship of this competition, as it is greatly appreciated. So, here's a big shout out to you, Mofa. Thanks for all you do. For, for the people, people of, of our, our great nation. nation. We, we love you. Thank, Thank you for your, your attention. attention. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. It's a great honor and a pleasure for all of us to be here today. And we thank the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Education for organizing this very professional and sophisticated contest. I've participated several times, and each time I think I can speak for my fellow judges to say that we are blown away by the quality of the students, by their organization, by their English ability, by everything that makes them strong. And those of you who say in the contest that Taiwan's youth are Taiwan's future and Taiwan's strength are not wrong. You are absolutely um, the best thing about Taiwan. Um, let me tell you a few things about, a few details about the judge's job, okay? We look for skills in three area. One is the English ability, the second one is the content of your speech, and the third one is your stage manner, so your performance skills. Um, most of you, I think, have outstanding English ability, so um, I won't nag you too much about that. <laughs> As an English teacher, it's hard to avoid nagging you about English skills, but you really do stand out. In the other two areas, though, in terms of content and performance manner, you can really um, make, your, make your team um, um, look, uh, look better, look more outstanding than other teams if you, I think, follow, pay attention to some of the content issues. The first thing is, I'll give you some do's and don'ts about the content of your speeches. First thing is, do, I do recommend that you think big, okay? And think big means how Taiwan can solve some of the most pressing issues in the world. The biggest areas are uh, healthcare, global environmental protection, safety. Anybody who has lived in America knows that it's much, much safer to be in Taiwan. And you've engineered a society that protects people, especially women, I think. And this is something, some kind of knowledge, a kind of soft power that you don't understand how uh, advanced Taiwan is in this area <laughs> until you really live in the States or live in another more dangerous country. New energy is also a pressing issue, and transportation. So I would say think big. And by that I mean don't, maybe don't focus on the aspects of Taiwan culture that don't travel well. And by this I mean, I'm sorry, but things like Taiwan food and Taiwan culture and so on, uh, performance culture, might not be the thing that brings Taiwan to the attention of the world. If Taiwan wants the attention of the world, you have to help solve the world's problems. And you know what those are. Um, next thing I would say is, in terms of um, uh, organization of your speech, focus. Don't scatter your resources over multiple different areas. If you talk about Taiwan culture and Taiwan, you know, eco-friendly technology and so on, we kind of lose track of what you've said. If you focus on one area, maybe medical technology, maybe um, some way of uh, reducing plastic or whatever it is, focus on something, give examples, give, uh, give some kind of references from uh, real world solutions and that will make us remember what you said. Okay, if you scatter it, uh, lose focus, it's hard for us to figure out what your speech was about. Finally, don't, in, and this goes for both your speeches and your play performance, don't be condescending. And by this I mean, if you are uh, a partner to the world, don't consider the other party as being inferior. Like, I, I got the feeling through several of the plays that uh, the students thought that 
um, these other countries weren't able to solve their own problems and Taiwan would kind of like fly in as an angel to help. That might be true, <laughs> but that's not the way to look at it. I think the way to look at it is that we're all in this together. We're all on this earth together. We've got to find a way to help each other survive. So it's not one is stronger than another, or one is smarter or better than another. We can share these resources and we really need to for the survival. Don't fall back on cliches. Cliches about Taiwan or any other country. Look for a really specific strengths, look for um, specific ways that Taiwan can help. Um, and again, uh, as the colleagues have mentioned, Taiwan's strength is very much in its youth and it's very much in the way education is structured here. And if the government, I think, is serious about making Taiwan, uh, making English a national language in Taiwan, the government is going to invest many more resources in, in making Taiwan people, uh, making it easier for you to communicate with the world, making it easier for foreigners to come here and interact with people. And uh, in, other way, in other words, to open Taiwan to the world in new ways. Um, again, uh, as all my colleagues have mentioned, you guys taught us a great deal today, and you make us very proud to be associated with you. So thank you. Thank you so much.高马丽教授果然是很多年都有参与到我们外交小尖兵他看到我们台湾的这些青年朋友们呢不断在成长所以呢其实在口说能力上面在英语能力上面呢其实都是有非常好的水准但是就是希望大家可以在想得更远可以
and read extensively through, for example, all the international news media, New York Times, Financial Times, Wall Street Journal, USA Today. There are so many wonderful articles, touching, timely, with beautiful vocabulary, expression, grammar, and so forth, much, much better than what is included in your own current textbook. So you can learn this through your teachers, your parents, your brother and sister, and work on that through which you can really learn the updated new vocabulary, expression, grammatical patterns, style, and new terminology and so forth beyond your traditional textbook. Don't worry about cramming bu xi. Bu xi sometimes is useless. Just get away from that and go into extensive reading. And the second part is also reading intensively and also critically through which you can get new knowledge, new idea, and convert all what you have learned and read, read from the material into your own in-depth knowledge. If you can do that, I'm sure beyond this competition and your performance today, you can go and do much, much better in the international context. And that's the way you are going to do. Talking about the, the idea of making Taiwan international competitiveness, I want to ask you, why didn't you talk about, number one, international education of Taiwan? We are not that competitive enough compared with many other countries in Asia. Number two, why didn't you mention the development of human resources, human talents, 人才培训, are we really doing a good job on our government in that area? No. So the best way for you to do, to learn, is read extensively and intensively and critically. By doing so, you can do much better and you can learn more in the future and to pave the way for all of you. I'm really proud of you to go beyond your present situation. I believe that all of the contestants here in this, in this uh, today, we go for the PhD degree, we go overseas, and some of you, I'm sure, will be like your predecessors, who are now professors, engineers, scholars, even ambassadors and the true diplomats working all over the world. And those are role model you have to follow. So be sure to keep working hard. And finally, I would like to suggest that you are doing so well today. And I can see the shadow and the impact of your English teachers and your parents. So please join me in saying thanks to your English teachers. Give them a big hand too. Okay. <laughs> Without them, you won't be here. Thank you, and good luck. Keep working hard, keep going, for the sake of the internationalization and competitive, international competitiveness of our country, Taiwan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Professor. Wow. 李教授不愧是也是多年陪伴小尖兵成长的教授，所以呢，大家的资质都非常好，所以他期望也很高。就希望大家呢，能够跳脱一般我们传统的教科书上面的知识，能够更及时的、更大量的去吸取各种不断更新的有关于世界一切的资讯，这样子我们才可以一直都走在最前面。好，大家加油喽，继续努力好不好？但是呢，我觉得呢，这个阶段其实评审老师都给大家非常高的一个赞赏。所以，给自己一个掌声，好不好？<笑>那接下来呢，我们就要正式进入第三个阶段——意志问答比赛